Hey guys, welcome to another episode of IGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're looking at the 10th topic of the syllabus, diseases and immunity. Uh, where it's a huge topic, so we're cutting it down into two different videos. In the first video, we're looking at the core elements, and in the next, we're looking at the supplemental elements of the topic. So have a quick read of that first. So a couple of easy definitions. Pathogens are any organisms that can cause diseases. Okay, quite simple. And these diseases can be transmissible, in which pathogens can move from one host to another, and that can happen through direct contact or indirect contact. Now, our bodies have several defense mechanisms. For example, the mechanical barriers, like skin and nose hair, are to prevent uh, bacteria and other pathogens from entering our bodies. But even once it's in, we've got chemical barriers like mucus, which aims to kind of uh, trap pathogens in its sticky substance, and eventually we release it by coughing and stuff like that. Or uh, we've got stomach acid, which uh, if we ever ingest food that contains pathogens, then it has um, the ability to create an acidic environment for these pathogens to not be able to live through um, and eventually kill them. Uh, but most importantly, we've got cells like phagocytes for phagocytosis and uh, lymphocytes for antibody production that we will be looking at in our next two slides. So antibody, antibody production is a rather complex uh, thing to understand. But first of all, let's take a look at what a pathogen might look like. Now we've got pathogen A, and all pathogens have some sort of markers on the edge of their cells or in their cell membranes, and we call those antigens. Now we'll say that pathogen A has antigen A, with this specific shape, circular red structure. And every pathogen, uh, the way pathogens differentiate from other pathogens is by these antigens, all right? So for example, we've got pathogen B that has a different type of antigen, we'll call it antigen B, and you can see that the shape is different, it's more triangular, whereas the first one was more circular. So therefore, these two are different pathogens. Okay, that, and that's how you differentiate them. Now, let's just imagine, if, forget about pathogen B for now, we'll only, we'll only be looking at pathogen A. Imagine pathogen A has somehow gone into your body and uh, it's just chilling in the blood. Now, we have these very handy cells called lymphocytes, and eventually pathogen A will meet lymphocyte A. Now, what's very important here is that lymphocytes are very specific. And similar to pathogens, lymphocytes have these things called cell receptors, and every different lymphocyte are differentiated via these receptors. Okay, so lymphocyte A might have receptor A that looks like this shape, but another type of lymphocyte, for example, lymphocytes B's, might have receptors, will, will have receptors that are completely different in shape to these ones here that, I'm, that we're looking at. So, what's important though is that antigen A has come across lymphocyte A and that these, uh, these receptors on lymphocyte A fit perfectly to the antigens of this uh, specific pathogen, okay? So, if you take a look at this here, this is the antigen and this is the receptor coming from the lymphocyte and therefore, that specific antigen binds to the specific receptor of the lymphocyte, in this case, lymphocyte A. And what happens then is that ly the lymphocyte gets activated and it, um, it gets the signal to produce antibodies, which are pretty much the same as these uh, receptors that you find um, on the outer edge of the cells. Uh, however, they're not attached onto the cell anymore, they're kind of flying out. Um, and they're, they're, they're loose versions, as I say in, um, in, in the sentence here. And so why is that important? What, what, what is the role of antibodies? Well, these antibodies, because they come from lymphocyte A, which has the ability to bind with antigen A because of its complementary shape, we call it complementary when it's like a direct fit, then these antibodies are able to bind onto the antigens of this specific pathogen 
and hinder its function. Okay, so one of these one of these functions might just be to clump all these pathogens together so that they're ready for phagocytosis, which is basically how our cells um, digest these uh, these pathogens. Okay, so let's take a look at pathogen B. Now, if pathogen B was chilling in the blood and it came across lymphocyte A, what do you think would happen? Absolutely nothing, because receptor A does not fit to antigen B. They're completely different shapes. They're not complementary. Okay, in that case, lymphocyte A would probably do, it wouldn't be activated, it'd probably just pass by as if nothing happened at all. It's just not not going to get activated. This, this whole sequence isn't going to be produced. Alright, however, eventually it will come across a lymphocyte that will exactly have the fit that it needs. Alright, so of course it's bad for the pathogen because that, that's, that means it's going to pretty much get destroyed, but if you find that pathogen B is just chilling in the blood, eventually you'll end up with lymphocyte B being able to recognize this antigen just because it has a complementary um, receptor that fits the antigen perfectly and therefore lymphocyte B will get activated to produce antibodies with this shape and once again attach onto the pathogen and hinder its function. And uh, as I said, one of these functions are to clump the pathogens together to prepare it for ph uh, phagocytosis, which we will look at here. So if this is the cell that uh, they want to destroy, then the, ph uh, the phagocyte will extend its membrane and engulf it to form a vesicle called a phagosome that contains the cell. And you've got pockets of digestive enzymes which eventually fuse with this phagosome and those enzymes destroy the cell and the fragments are released later on out the cell. Okay, so not going into too much detail with phagocytosis, but this is definitely something that you need to be able to um, understand perfectly because it will come out so many times um, in your next couple of years. And uh, this is the last yet most obvious kind of syllabus content where we've got controlling the spread of disease. Now personal hygiene and washing hands are very important because it aims to protect, uh, sorry, prevent direct and indirect transmission of diseases. Uh, sewage, um, that's quite important because if that's not properly managed then it can contaminate our drinking water which is another source of uh, disease spread. And waste disposal, if you don't do that properly, then it can attract rats and flies and other creatures of the sort, which can turn, uh, which in turn can spread uh, certain diseases, which, you know, it's not good. So anyways, um, I hope that made a lot of sense. If it doesn't, just watch the video one more time and try and kind of make sense of everything, because I know this topic is something that I have had a lot of trouble with when I was studying IGCSE biology but um, if, if there are further questions then you can ask me in the comment sections below and I will try my best to kind of help you understand um, whatever you're kind of finding hard but anyways um, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the, in the next video